very good afternoon to everybody and welcome to today's session, Exploring Academic Partnerships to Drive New Opportunities. It's great to see you all today and I hope you're all well. My name is Gemma and I'm from the Expo North Digital team. Expo North Digital is Highlands and Islands Enterprises mechanism for specialist digital support for the creative and heritage economies across the Highlands and Islands region and the project is delivered by Ironworks Venue. This project is part of HIE's Northern Innovation Hub designed to build on and accelerate business innovation. It is funded through the Inverness and Highland City Region Deal, a joint initiative supported by £315 million of investment from the UK and Scottish governments, Highland Council, HIE, UHI. I'm now going to pass over to Alex Smith, who is our project lead for Expo North Digital. Awesome. Thanks, Gemma. I appreciate that. And um, thanks, everyone, for joining us. It's great to see you all. And thanks for giving us your time and attention. Um, so as Gemma said, uh, and I'm sure you guys have, have read the overview copy, um, this is part of a, a strand of our project that we loosely call Marshalling Resources, which essentially is about um, how we can start to draw alignment between particularly academia and, and the sector and explore kind of partnership options, uh, invite representatives from those organisations to come in and talk about the programmes they currently have, how you can access them, what they might look like when you do. Um, and we're really pleased as well to be joined, as we usually do in calls like this, for, with Interface as well, who uh, I'll let Caroline in a moment introduce herself. However, um, very important around how you can make those kind of links work and, and the various support strands that they offer. Um, I'm just going to run, we can try and be quite quick with time to bring the guys in as quickly as we can, but really pleased to be joined by Professor Steve Love. Um, who will introduce himself in a moment, but he's the head of knowledge exchange at the School of Innovation and Technology at Glasgow School of Art, and equally delighted to have Caroline Adams with us, business engagement executive at Interface. Um, so we're going to, the format of the session will be, I'm going to hand over to Steve in a moment, and he's going to run through the School of Innovation and Technology, give an introduction to what that is, uh, and the types of support that they can, that they can offer, and what those programmes look like. Um, and we're then going to hear straight into Caroline Adams, who will do a similar presentation around Interface. And then it would be great at that point, um, if anyone has any questions, we'd love to make the session as interactive as we can, as quickly as we can. Um, there's a few ways that we can do that. It would be great if everyone's comfortable to come on camera and come on mic and uh, put your questions to the guys or us as Expo North Digital as well. Equally happy to talk about our position in the conversation too. Um, if you'd rather not do that, please pop any questions in the chat. I'll capture them as we go along, and then I can field them to um, Caroline and Steve as we go through the session. Um, so, Steve, I'm happy if you're okay just to, I'll pass over to you if you want to give a quick introduction to yourself, to the School of Innovation and Technology, because I'm presuming that would be relatively new to some of us, um, would be fantastic. Um, and then we'll go straight into your presentation. Great. Thanks, Alex. Uh, thanks, Gemma. Well, thanks, everyone, for taking the time to come here today. Uh, as Alex says, uh, I'm Steve Love. I'm a professor of user experience design and I head up uh, knowledge exchange activities in the School of uh, Innovation and Technology at the Glasgow School of Art. And the idea of my presentation today is just to give you an overview of what we do there in terms of uh, knowledge exchange and how we're really keen to work with uh, different companies and organisations and sort of community groups in the area of knowledge exchange. So if you want to, maybe I could start with my slides now, uh, Gemma, that would be great. Okay, yeah. That's the introduction slide, as I said, um, uh, from School of Innovation and Technology. Uh, who are we? Well, we were officially launched in August 2023. Uh, you may not know it, but the Glasgow School of Art up until that point was made up of five schools. School of Fine Art, Macintosh School of Architecture, School of Design, the Innovation School, and the school I was in, the School of uh, Simulation and Visualisation. And the Glasgow School of Art decided to amalgamate these two smaller schools and launches as the new School of Innovation and Technology in August last year. And it was a good uh, merger as far as we were all concerned because the School of uh, Simulation and Visualization or SimViz, as, as we like to call it, uh, we were very much uh, more towards the digital technologies, emerging technologies 
side of design at the art school and the, obviously the innovation school they were looking at more design research through innovation design led innovation and it would seem like a natural combination for the two of us uh, to come together and I think it's a really good merger and lots of the staff everyone seems to be happy uh, with this merger okay can the next slide please Jenna so my, my role as head of knowledge exchange is really to position SIT to become a design innovation research centre. We want to work across, for example, the Scottish Funding Council's four innovation centres. They are, you know, IBYC, Data Lab, BEST, and DHI, which I'll talk about in a minute. And my, my role is to develop a, what we want to call a scalable knowledge exchange impact and innovation ecosystem. And what we're really interested in doing is working with uh, colleagues, develop partnerships, relationships with people outside academia so that we can really make a difference through our design-led innovation and design research at a local, national and uh, international level as well. And I should point out to this stage is that we have, we're based in two campuses. Obviously we're based in the main uh, GSA campus in Glasgow. But the GSA, if you're not aware of it, also has a campus in Altair uh, near Forres. And I'm sure Alex and his team have, have been out to visit there as well. So our particular school, we are uh, split between those two. And so we're really keen uh, to work with companies and organisations uh, in the Highlands and Islands of Scotland as well. And I can give an example of some of the work we're doing in this area in a minute. Uh, next slide, please, Jenna. We've got kind of four kind of key areas of expertise. One is health, uh, well-being and care, heritage, digital and future heritage. For example, we have a, a master's course in uh, digital heritage. We have a MSc course in medical visualization. We run undergraduate courses in serious games and virtual reality, sound for the moving image, product design, courses like that. We're also interested in place, cultural landscapes and island communities. We do a lot of work up in Shetland. Uh, we try to engage with some of the uh, islands in the Western Isles, for example. We've worked with BBC Alpa in the past, and I'll mention in a minute when we talk about digital technologies, we're working with a school in uh, Harris, in Lexdale Primary School, all around digital creativity and the Gaelic language. And our digital technologies is all based around design-based learning with schools and school children, but also for other uh, contexts as well, like design manufacturing for advanced uh, medicines. And all permeating through that, we're interested in looking at how you can use emerging technologies and things like AI, but from a design perspective, how can you design these things so that they are fit for purpose for what people want to use them for? Okay, next slide, please, Jenna. So we currently, in terms of the Scottish Innovation Centres, we have strategic partnerships with the Digital Health Institute, which we run in collaboration with the University of Strathclyde, BEST, which is the Built Environment Smarter Transformation uh, Innovation Centre, where that's all around, you know, the construction industry and moving towards Scotland's uh, net zero targets in terms of constructing buildings and you know, things like that. IBOC, which is the Industrial Biotechnology Innovation Centre. We have worked with them in a project looking at textiles and fabrics, how you can make them um, more sustainable. We're also going to do public engagement work with them around school children. And again, it's all around this digital uh, creativity. And you know, one of the projects we're looking at there is you know, the day in the life of a carbon atom, we maybe work with school children for them to create an animation to explain what a carbon atom is and things like that. And we've also uh, reached out to uh, work with, I've just realised I've got a typo there. <laughs> it's plan, not plant. Uh, uh, collaborate with, we want to plant the seeds <laughs> to collaborate with the data lab in the near future. Okay, uh, next slide, please. And basically, what, would, what do we mean by this? If we have this design innovation research centre, so what it is for us is 
We want our design-led innovation approach to help businesses, organisations and communities to design, prototype, evaluate new services, applications and work practices. And we want to help them tackle any sort of cultural, economic challenges that they have and hopefully make a contribution to help them flourish. And our approach to design-led innovation is very much collaboration. You know, we don't, we want to work with the communities, we want to work with the organisations right from the start on a project. For example, we always get people to take part in our co-design activities to help companies themselves develop capacity building and they can undertake these knowledge exchange activities and we can uncover challenges together and we can put forward recommendations if that was appropriate for particular things. In relation to our work with BEST, I'll give you an example, we do a variety of work for example, we have worked with BEST on construction procurement reform. You know, it might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I think it's an area that needed a, a reform and they came to us to see, right, how can we more, make this process more efficient, more effective uh, for the people who use it? And we identified a series of recommendations and hopefully they'll be able to take them forward. But again, it was taking this co-design approach whereby we ran workshops, we identified the key groups of stakeholders who were involved in the process. So they, only by getting the key groups of stakeholders together can you really get a clearer idea of what everyone's needs and requirements are in relation to uh, solving a problem like this. At the other end of the scale, Best came to us uh, during the lockdown and asked if we could help create some digital learning materials, scenarios, and it was to help apprentices uh, go back to college and onto commercial sites and domestic dwellings uh, during the pandemic when it was still you know, restricted in people's movements and also have what they should do in terms of travelling on public transport. And the then Scottish Housing Minister went to BEST and he was showing these learning materials and his recommendation was at the time that everyone in the construction industry should be given access to these materials to help them to return safely to work. Another area of work with one of the, the innovation centres, the Digital Health Institute, is we are using a design-led innovation approach to develop, of really focusing on person-centred uh, digital healthcare solutions. And one of the key things we have done recently was during the COVID pandemic, was using our uh, co-design approach to create a virtual space for collaboration, to bring all these different groups together to design an application and our researchers played a key role in the design and the development of the track and trace digital application and it was through this workshop getting the stakeholders together the key stakeholders to see what their requirements were that led to a set of design recommendations and they were able to uh, send out the track and trace system which proved to be very effective we're also part of the rural center for excellence in Moray which is funded through uh, the Moray Growth Deal, and that's been extended, uh, I think, until 2025. And the idea, again, there is to look at local communities in the Moray area to see how we can adopt a design-led uh, innovation approach to personalise and improve in, uh, different aspects of healthcare there. OK, next slide, please, Gemma. Another area of work that we've worked a lot on is in the area of uh, digital heritage. And this is an example of how uh, collaboration started off with an innovation voucher and then moved on to a more substantial piece of work. So ISO Designer, an international design agency based in Glasgow, and they came to us uh, to help them uh, with the design of a series of interactive exhibits they had been commissioned to produce for the new v and in Dundee. So I, I don't know if you've... Uh, managed to visit there yet but if you go in and you can see things like the Hunter Welly which I didn't realise until we started working on it that Hunter was a Scottish company uh, so there's a Hunter Welly we're also looking at a lovely uh, jewellery a kind of uh, light shade and we worked with them on the design of these interactive exhibits and what we did was again bringing this co-design approach we, we said to ISO it's really important to get different types of stakeholders involved in the design process so not only did we want 
you know, the artists whose work it was that they were going to try and make digital and interactive. But we said it was important to get people like who, the, the managers of a museum, they should come in, the marketing people, the accountants, you know, the, the staff that, you know, provide the security in each floor, because it's really important that everyone gets a clear idea of what it is that you're trying to develop. You know, from a marketing viewpoint, they can then say, okay, this is what's going to be the end product and we can help, you know, market this in a suitable way for the accountants. They can see the way the money's going to get spent as well. And they think, right, this is good value for money or I don't think, you know, uh, maybe we need a bit more money. I didn't realise we had enough money to do this or whatever. And one of the things that we found during uh, this kind of process was, you know, where, where do you put an exhibit? A lot of people might not necessarily think about where to put the exhibit, but that can have a big impact on people, the visitors being able to walk through a museum to try and get to somewhere else. Do you want to have an exhibit that's really blocking the flow of people? Because that could lead to health and safety issues. People will have to think about that. If you've got a video that you're showing as part of a, an exhibit, how long do you think people really want to watch a video? And it's a lot shorter. You know, we've done a bit of research and it's actually a lot shorter than you think. People only really want to watch something uh, for a couple of minutes really before they want to, in general, before they want to move on. So we helped them to design uh, the exhibits and we provided feedback. It was an iterative design process. They come up with design ideas. We tested them with groups of participants. Then we provided feedback to ISO and their designers so they could make the final changes. Now, on the basis of our work with ISO, the AHRC, which is the Arts and Humanities Research Council, which is one of the UKRI funding bodies, announced a call for the future next generation of digital technology. And they're looking for applications for people to work together with organisations. So we approached ISO because we'd worked together on uh, the V&A design. And we had an idea to work on another project. This time it was around the Macintosh building. At that point, there'd only been one fire in the Macintosh building. And this was 2017. And we were going to build a virtual, uh, an AR exhibit around one of the most famous plaster cast statues in the GSC. And this was going to be used as an exhibition when the Macintosh building opened again. And it was the Leocoon. And for those of you who know your Greek mythology, Laocoon uh, was the Trojan priest who told, who shouted out, beware of Greeks bearing gifts, and we tried to warn them about the, the dangers of the Trojan horse, but they didn't believe him. And his punishment was to see his sons get eaten by sea serpents. And this is the kind of picture, the, the full picture of Laocoon is his hands are up in horror as his sons are dragged into the water. So we worked with ISO to try to develop a uh, augmented reality exhibit around the damaged Leocoon from the first fire, and that was to include how it was restored. But unfortunately, just before the exhibition started, the fire happened, the second fire happened, and the Leocoon got burnt down, so we had to change it. And we developed a virtual reality version of the Leocoon, because luckily we had taken scans 3D scans of the Macintosh building after the first fire, and we included all the plaster cast statues. And again, we got groups of stakeholders, people from archives and collections, other people from Macintosh Society, and we developed a four minute virtual reality experience for people to use, go in with their headset on, and they could walk around the Macintosh building, which no longer physically exists in the way it was and they could interact with this Leocoon statue and find out all about the history of it in relation to the art school. And when we tested it on colleagues from the archives and collections, some of them actually started crying at the end of it because it was such a moving experience for them and they knew that the building didn't actually exist in real life anymore. And also for us, which was really good, the HRC were so impressed with this uh, digital development that they invited us, the GSA, to go to the South by Southwest Festival in 2019 as part of the official delegation. And this was uh, shown as one of the best examples of projects that had been funded uh, under that scheme. Now, there is a link to someone doing a walk round of it, but 
they could try it, but it's not guaranteed it'll work. So we'll, we'll try it, Gemma, and see. And this is the point of view. This is someone This is Leakawan. Legend has it he was a Trojan priest who, along with his two sons, was attacked by sea serpents sent by the gods. The story's most iconic depiction is a marble sculpture from ancient Greece that is now in the Vatican that many believe to be a copy of an earlier bronze work. You are looking at a plaster replica of the central figure that existed in the Glasgow School of Arts Macintosh building. From the time of its rediscovery, copies of Leakuan and his sons were made in marble and in plaster. Many were used for teaching drawing and anatomy in art schools where collections of casts were wheeled between studios for students to work from. As drawing from casts fell out of fashion, many were destroyed. At Glasgow School of Art, however, Leakuan and other plaster casts were retained and were familiar figures in the school's corridors. In May 2014, this cast was badly damaged in the fire that ravaged the west end of the famous Macintosh building. As if attacked by the gods again, the intense heat and smoke transformed Leakuan's marble-white plaster surface to a sooty, blistered black. A decision was made to conserve the plaster cast, given its importance in art education and also its history as part of the GSA collection. The first step was to examine Leakuan and establish how it was made so it could be strengthened. There was this moment when I was looking at them and they had become something out. They really, really had become something else. They were already stunning. To think that people had cast these from amazing sculptures and they'd survived all these years until now, until this point. And then there was a fire and suddenly the fire had turned them into something completely different again. We didn't know whether he was solid or hollow, so we had to work out how is the consolidant going to penetrate the plaster itself. We drilled holes into the Laocoon's body. One was to allow the endoscope to go in, so we could see all around the inside of the cast, but then we could use the same holes to actually spray the consolidant, so we could use a, a, a tool to go through those holes, so we could use those holes for as many purposes as possible, and we could then check how the consolidation was doing with the endoscope. In terms of the conservation, in terms of the patina that the damage from the fire has lent it, what is just incredible here and absolutely magnetic is it's almost as if Leia Kwan or this copy of a copy of a copy has reverted to the original that has been lost to the mist of time. And so we have a slice of that original experience because this dark colour is actually the patina that the bronze would have assumed. The conservation work made value of Leakuan's transformation, preserving the surface like a darkened bronze. This beautiful copy, unique in its appearance, was stored in the Macintosh building because of its size and fragility. Sadly, it perished in the fire of June 2018. But does this mean it is lost? Our version may only exist in this intangible digital space, but could this be considered a faithful copy of the plaster cast, which was a copy of the Vatican marble, which was possibly a copy of a lost bronze? Our conserved Leakuan exists as point cloud data, and this can be transformed back into physical material through 3D printing. It can be rendered and textured in a limitless number of materials, rescaled or replicated infinitely. Would such an object be any less authentic than any of the other copies made over the past 2,000 years, in print, in sculpture, or in plaster? The Leakuan lives on. Okay, thanks. Maybe uh, if, if you're ever down in Glasgow, if you email me in advance, I can maybe set, I can set up for you to come and actually try out the the headset and for yourself because it's really quite a powerful uh, experience.
before I mention that, one of the other things that we projects we're doing is around schools and digital creativity. Uh, we're working with schools in Western Isles, Moray, as I said, and Lexdale Primary, and Glasgow, Dumfries, other areas as well. And it's all around uh, giving children access to digital creativity skills and around screen-based uh, media. And we found this project to be really uh, engaging for the pupils and the teachers. For example, we've got 40 schools in Glasgow who want to collaborate with us on our digital creativity programme. And what we're finding is that not only is it teaching the children about soft skills around teamwork and collaboration, but it's also helping them uh, to develop digital skills. And a lot of the work that we do is community-based. We tell them to make stories, animation, films about their local community and where the school sits in it. So that's another uh, area that we're interested in developing as well. Overall, you know, just to summarise, we are keen uh, to work with companies, organisations and community groups. Like Carolan will tell you that the funding, there's different ways that we can collaborate together through interface funding schemes, knowledge transfer partnerships are also uh, an option for us going forward as well, and Innovate UK opportunities and other opportunities from the Scottish Government via Scottish Enterprise or whatever. So hopefully I've given you a good idea of you know what our strengths are and hopefully uh, it might have sparked an interest for you to have a, a conversation with us uh, going forward. So thank you for your time. That's me. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Steve. That's great. And um, if I can pass over to you, Caroline, would be great. Great. Thanks, Gemma. So I'm Caroline, and I work for an organisation called Interface as part of the Highlands and Islands team. And I'm just going to give a little bit of a summary of what we do and explain how we fit into all of this. So Interface is an established feature in Scotland's innovation landscape. And we've got nearly a 20 year history of working with SMEs, traders, third sectors and charities so across all sectors and we match them to Scotland's world leading academic expertise and um, there's so much knowledge and skills within the university network which can be a valuable and re uh, very useful resource for businesses but how do people tap into that resource how do you know where to access all that help um, slide three now please that's it thanks Gemma um, the Scottish Uni University Network is absolutely massive and even if you knew of a contact in your local university, you might need assistance from a different department or expertise from another institution and that's where Interface can help. So we bridge that gap by providing a matchmaking service which is completely free of charge and impartial as well. So we help match businesses with the best ac academic teams across Scotland wherever they may be based, to deliver projects which will help solve a challenge or an issue that the business is facing, or maybe that they don't have the necessary knowledge or um, capability in-house to find a solution themselves. And through our established and efficient process, we can promote knowledge exchange and accelerate the pace of innovation. Next slide, please, Gemma. Oh, I think you're already on it. I'm, I'm maybe done this. So it should, we should be on slide four now, is that right? Okay, so our team works across the whole of Scotland, um, stimulating demand for projects, which will create a positive impact with the potential to create new products, <clears throat> excuse me, new processes, services, increased turnover, productivity, and safeguard or create uh, new jobs. And nearly three quarters of projects happen with a university out with the region of the partnering business. And that just highlights how Interface is best placed to source assistance from a university you may not already have connections into. Next slide, Gemma, please. So innovation is driven by partnerships and collaboration, as Steve's just been um, running through. And Interface enjoys close ties with many of the organisations and agencies that support innovation in Scotland, and the variety of, of which you can see in this slide here. And when we seek academic assistance, assistance for your project, we reach out to all relevant institutions that hold the right expertise all in one fell swoop. And we give them a very short deadline to respond back to us. So it, it's quite a quick process. 
Next slide, please, Gemma. So we've worked hard, really hard, to create a very streamlined and efficient process. And we help scope up the project. We then send it around all the universities and research centres at the one time, inviting expressions of interest. And for those academic teams or partners who have responded, we connect you to the ones that you feel are the best match and that you'd like to discuss your project further with. And we can suggest funding to support the project and we're on hand from start to finish, making the process of engaging with an academic team as straightforward as possible. And next slide, Gemma. So Interface manages funding to help offset the cost of collaborations, but we can also identify a range of other funding options designed to support academic projects. Next slide, thanks. So there's small innovation grants available for first-time collaborations, and that's up to £7,500, which, if approved, it goes directly to the university for their work on the project. And as an organisation, business or third sector, you need only match that with an in-kind contribution, so not cash. And that's like time, materials or equipment. And, and even our sole traders or budding entrepreneurs manage to match that, so it's very easily done. And for larger scale projects, oh, no, not yet, <laughs> but thanks. And um, for larger scale projects, Interface manages the Advanced Innovation Voucher Scheme on behalf of Scottish Enterprise. And that can be used to support projects of a value of up to £40,000, but it does require a sliding scale contribution from the business, depending on the total project cost. <clears throat> There's also other funding um, schemes such as the Knowledge Transfer Partnership, KTP, that Steve mentioned, but that's usually at the, at the upper end of the project funding that the interface can help look at. Um, the £7,500 innovation grant is usually used for things like feasibility studies or proof of concepts. And once something's been proven to be a viable option to pursue further, that's when we start to move up the, the um, larger amounts of funding. But there's also many opportunities for students to work on short, sharp, defined projects for businesses, and they don't normally incur a cost for business at all. And the business benefits from fresh thinking, often from a group of students, not just one, getting the up-to-date research. And the students benefit um, from working on real-world real world challenges, and um, it, it really helps to improve their skill set and their employability. And it can cover a host of areas, student projects, management and HR, strategy, marketing, tourism and leisure, computing science, social and health sciences, food and drink, engineering, just about every discipline that you can think of. We've usually got an opportunity for a student project to, to help your, your organisation. And once a business or academic collaboration is formed, further funding opportunities can open up after that, as some schemes ask that you already have an academic partner in place before you go ahead and apply. So I thought I would show just a couple of case studies, which were delivered in partnership with Glasgow School of Art, so relevant for today. So on one, please, Gemma. So the Scottish Ballet, the mission of the Scottish Ballet is to produce world-class dance and learning opportunities. Uh, designed to engage and excite diverse audiences in Scotland, the UK and internationally. And the company approached Interface for a project to evaluate the potential of using augmented reality in a dan dance context. I always want to say dance contest there, but that's something completely different. Um, dance context. So the in innovative project produced a 3D movie of bespoke dance sequences to widen public dissemination and participation in the arts. And next slide, Gemma. <clears throat> and Sea Monster, this is a completely other side of the coin. Um, Mark Eden is founding director of Sea Monster and he's an avid surfer. And it was during these surfing trips that Mark became really frustrated about the lack of way to allow his surf kit to dry, keep it all together without losing stuff every trip and transport it in a really convenient manner. And this had led to the development of an early stage prototype that he'd um, made. So Mark was looking to work in collaboration with a university partner to develop the product, for, product further by enhancing the design, minimising the use of materials, um, using recyclable materials where possible, and identifying the best possible mat materials that could be used in a manufacturing process. So design expertise was needed to make the product fully market ready. 
And so the project focused on optimising the design by taking advantage of the product design skills, detailed material knowledge, and extensive network of manufacturers that the academic within um, Glasgow School of Art had. And they developed a design that would have great functionality and could be manufactured at a price point that would make the product commercially viable. Now, that was released during COVID, just about 2021. And because of the increase in popularity of going outside and, and enjoying wild um, swimming and, and being out in the open environment, his sales have absolutely surpassed expectations and he's just gone from strength to strength. And I bought a couple for family members at Christmas. It's just a fantastic piece of kit. They just absolutely loved it. So on to the last slide, Gemma, thanks. <clears throat> so if you've got an idea that you'd like to explore, if you're developing new products, if you're looking to improve an existing service or looking to find brand new ways of working um, to help grow your business, um, Interface can help find an academic partner for you. Um, I hope that's maybe given you some ideas um, for the project. Please feel free to get in touch. Alex and Gemma are going to share my details and I'd be delighted to go through that um, in any more detail with you. That's it. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Caroline. Appreciate that. And thanks to you as well, Stephen. Um, some great stuff there. And, and we'll speak with uh, Stephen and Caroline about hopefully making most of these resources available to you because I'm aware that we kind of blitz through quite, quite a lot of information and quite a lot of details. and. Um, uh, this is the part of the, the the meeting, hopefully, where we can hear from you guys if you're comfortable or if you have any questions you want to ask about either interface or the mechanics of some of the stuff that Steve was talking about and the practicalities of some of that is usually some of the questions that come up with our networks in terms of this idea of collaboration with academia and what that might mean. <clears throat> and for what it's worth from our end, what we have seen uh, that's been really significant is, is lots of very small businesses leveraging these relationships with academia to unlock innovation, R&D, um, visioning exercises in order for them to see their products and service suites from a new angle, see what might be missing and get products and services onto market quicker. So we've we've seen some very effective examples of, um, of how powerful these types of relationships can be. Um, Nigel, are you happy to come in and ask your question? You, you made, made some comments in the chat. Yeah. Would be great to hear from you, that's okay. Yeah, so what it is, I, I've... For the last five years, I've run the Ability Academy, um, and the whole reason I set the Academy up is that I have a condition called bipolar, and at 17, I was told that I was the wrong type of person to work at the BBC. 20 years plus on, we now teach for BBC, BBC Accelerator Programme, BBC Natural History Unit, ITV, Emmerdale and Coronation Street, and we work with Netflix. And we want to do more partnership work with academia because I've already done courses with the Royal Conservatory. I, I go in every year to teach their AVID program. But I've actually got licenses myself, AVID licenses, to run the uh, software. But the problem is at the moment, because we've done all our training mainly online, we're now wanting to work in classroom, but we haven't actually got any kit ourselves. So we've only got my MacBook and that's it. So what we're looking to do is partner with an ac academic institution to work in partnership with them to deliver courses, but not only deliver courses in terms of the creative skills, but to help with mental health, to help with communication and confidence building. Because I know for a fact from my own experience that actually creativity can really help with mental health and it can help like doesn't matter even if you don't go into the creative industries just helps with confidence and uh, and just creativity in general helps with mental health basically so so that's my ask basically <laughs> so you're looking to work with a scottish academic team yeah. in order to roll out your program into in, into areas that that don't often get the opportunity like in the highlands uh, uh, there's a lot of stuff happens with the film and tv industry in like glasgow and edinburgh but in the highlands there's hardly anything and and the thing is now with remote technology it doesn't really matter because my last actual editing job i was in scotland the producer and director were in london and the actual avid the actual editing software i was controlling was in brighton so this is how this new technology can work is you don't physically have to be there but you just still need this the, the skills sort of thing and i think it's going to open up a lot of opportunities for the dis 
disabled communities because a lot of barriers are actually just getting into cities it's not the fact that they haven't got the right skills it's because a lot of the time cities are very inaccessible to get into so what would you envisage that a university partner would be able to do for you well to basically basically help me with um funding in terms of the computers or actually basically I could work if they've got computers available I, I could basically pay some money to, to work on the computers but also to develop a program where they are actually getting skills for the film and tv industry because post-production what happens a lot of the times all the filming is done in Scotland but then they they basically go back down to London to do the post-production. And I think this is they're missing a trick because if they've got the skills and abilities in Scotland, they wouldn't have to move back down to London to do the post-production. And now with this new film studio in Stirling, I think there's a big opportunity for both education and the industry to basically amalgamate because it's not just the TV and film industry. The games industry is massive in Scotland, and I can see that basically converging because the skills that you need are very much similar in terms of digital skills in terms of video editing it's it's all coming together and and the thing is even if you've got a business now what you need you need a video because that's the way people don't really want to read text they want to have a short one minute two minute video and that's why tiktok's basically picked up so so quick because people unfortunately a lot of the younger generation don't have the time to watch half an hour videos they, they just want one two minute videos that, that are basically to the point and which sell the product or service and I can teach them them skills. Well Interface wouldn't be able to introduce you to an academic partner if it was to access their equipment or for funding because the funding that we're able to access supports an academic team to undertake research that would mm. be beneficial to you. However, if it was about developing a programme that mm. was helping mental health and well-being, then that could be something that yeah. would maybe be able to help you. Where are you based, Nigel? Just outside of Glasgow. I live in Johnston. Because As you can tell, tell by my accent. <laughs> my colleague Jackie Sanderson covers the Glasgow area. So if you... I'm, I'm 15 minutes away from Glasgow, so a yeah, lot of the work fine. I do. So... Well, if you, if you want to get in contact with me, I'm going to... You're going to share my email address, aren't yeah, you, I'm Alex? Gonna, yeah. I'll share your email address, uh, Caroline, and, and also some information we have about Interface and some some uh, some links around that as well. So we, we'll make sure, we could even connect you guys together to take this mm. conversation. I guess. As yeah, well. sure. Yeah. I'll I'll be I'll happily introduce you to my colleague Jackie Nigel, and then you can have a chat. Perfect. Thank you. I mean, if you want to chat to us, if that's relevant as well, you mm -hmm. know, because we, we've done work in the past with a a charity based in Nairn called Friendly Access, for example. And that was all to do with people with uh, hidden disabilities. And it was around developing training tools uh, for Perfect. people. Awesome. Tracy, did you want to add something? Right, just... It'd be great to hear from yeah. you. Yeah, Nigel, hi. I would just really like to quickly respond to Nigel. Um, I'm really interested in what you're talking about. I'm really interested in what you're saying. Um, so I'm based in Orkney, between Orkney and Italy, um, because I was brought up between the two places, yeah. Um, and all the work that I do is investigating the relationship between place, people and time, so it kind of crosses heritage, um, et cetera, et cetera. I also have a publishing wing. Um, I resigned my academic professorial post to care for one of my children um, who is disabled and to make the move to Orkney, which has been utterly life-changing for that child. Um, I'm so I'm really interested in the relationships between place and well-being and environment. Uh, a lot well, of well my, my mental health improved so much since I've moved from London to Scotland I'll tell you that so fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. And, I, and because I've always worked internationally I'm really interested in why for example Italy isn't looking at these questions that's another issue but um, I so what I do one of the things I do is um, devise these group residencies which is a way for me to bring lots of other artists researchers together to accelerate my investigations yeah because I'm only one so I'm working with people like Professor Natalie Doonan in Montreal University who's been in Italy with me um, developing her own research using AI and VR looking at um, the pre-Roman settlements that are here at Sunday. And of course, there's huge crossovers with Orkney and Scotland there. The thing, I've just had a session with Nuke Collective today, 
um, New Collective Scotland, fantastic, the first neurodivergent artist collective, to talk about, because um, I got Orkney Business Gateway to fund me for some training. Um, because, of course, who I'm not reaching are precisely the people I want to reach. It, it, it's funny you say to... that, because some of the students that I teach have got autism, and they're my best editing students, because they look at things differently than... than whatever a normal person is and it's an amazing because the trouble is a lot of the times that the schools have kind of let them down because that they've like myself I was very good at music and art but I wasn't a good academically and I was told that I'd never achieve anything in life and I've just done my master's degree in filmmaking so just because okay. you have a disability visible or invisible this is why I set the ability academy because I don't look at the dis bit of ability disability yeah. I look at what people can do rather than what they can't do so yeah, so I'm really interested in developing my business. Um, so that's why um, I've been talking to Expo North, which has been absolutely brilliant. Um, the support's just been amazing. Um, to look at um, how I can completely reconfigure the way that I describe things and the media that I use to extend beyond the academics. You're, so universities are fully funding people to come to me and work on the projects, beyond the artists, etc. Uh, so it's so I'm really interested in the research in there about accessibility, um, particularly in the Highlands and Islands region, knowing that it would have to be, yeah. and I would always want it to be transferable, i.e. to Italy. Yeah. So yeah. I'm moving people down between Italy and um, Scotland. Um, part funding them through my business to try and get that kind of transfer going. So the bit that's from missing for me is um, capacity, you know, intellectual capacity, uh, creative capacity. So mm. that's really where I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. To, like, I don't know how this works, but I'm happy for my details to be shared. And so, so, yeah. Okay, we we can if you're happy for that, Nigel. We can facilitate that, Tracy. If, you, if you're happy to receive that too, we can. <laughs> forward offline but um tracy did you want to ask another question specific to the uh, uh the uh, museum of loss and renewal the, the, i noticed you put something in the chat there is there anything you want to put to steve or caroline about um yeah just just a remark really so i'm, I'm really interested in language yeah uh, in this case um not um national languages but um, you know, Steve, you started off, um, you know, using the term design, uh, and I'm really interested how, you know, we've become siloed. So I'm an alumna of Glasgow School of Art and Hungarian University of uh, the Arts and blah, 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 and all that stuff. And I always went through the fine art channels, but actually most of the work that I do is design led. But, I, you know, listening to you again today, it was like, it just really reminded me that I don't use those terms. You know, so I work with a lot of organizations like Art Connection in France to completely, you know, to come in and work with the teams of staff and use um, design led processes to um, look at the future ten, in 10 years of an art organization. Did the same with Time Span in Helmsdale, uh, with Netherlands Photo Institute in the Netherlands, etc. So I'm really interested in, you know, how we how we kind of get, we don't, we don't identify things that are relevant for us because we've already labeled ourselves. So I found it really fantastic, Steve, to hear what you were saying and the way that you were describing it. And then for that to be followed up by um, what you were saying, Caroline, you know, and the actual nuts and bolts of how these things can be achieved. So it was more just a remark, yeah? Yeah, all right. Yeah, I think what you're doing sounds really interesting as well. Tracy, so it'd be good to maybe find out a bit more about that as well to great. see if there's any potential for collaboration or anything. Yeah, it'd be fantastic. Great. Well, as again, you know, uh, Alex has got my details, so I'm quite happy uh, for anyone to contact me. Fantastic. We'll, we'll maybe get a little um, a little content package together for everyone who's registered and start exchanging some of the, the details and information that we talked about here. Um, we've got a few minutes left. It'd be fantastic to get put another couple of questions to Steve and Caroline if we can. Uh, Claire, do you have a question or are you happy to come on and ask that or is it something that you want me to put to the to the group? Hi, I was thinking that I was just putting my two pence worth in just because it was such an interesting conversation and it made me think about um, some other work and another programme that's going on. So I just thought I'd throw a bit of information in there, but thank you. No, thank you. We appreciate that. And um, we'll maybe grab that as well and share that too. Um, 
Okay, I think we're kind of bang on time. If, if anyone has anything else, um, please do come in. We, we have a couple of minutes left. Um, but if there's nothing else, I'm going to pass it across to Gemma in a moment to close out. Um, but once again, we really appreciate your time and, and your commitment to coming along and sharing so openly. It's yeah. really appreciated. And thank you so much to Steve and to Caroline, as always. A real pleasure. And um, what we'll try and do is we'll try and put uh, um, some of the information captured during today because I'm aware it was quite a lot, and particularly some of the video links that we didn't get a chance to show, and make sure that we circulate that uh, to everyone who attended. Um, and thanks so much. And if anything at all, you know, um, the Exmoor Digital Programme is here, and, and most of you guys, I think, are somewhat familiar with what we do. And um, please get in touch in a general way, too, with our programmes and engage with our programmes and our content. We'd love to have you on this journey with us. Um, and thanks again, Steve and Caroline. We really appreciate it. And thanks Pleasure. for joining. Um, Gemma, I'm going to pass across to you to lead us out, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Thank you to Caroline. Thank you to Steve and to Alex. I hope everybody enjoyed today's session and you found it a valuable use of your time. Please do visit our website, www.exponorth.co.uk, where you can look at our events section and sign up to our newsletter to be kept up to date with future events and news. Also on the website, we have our video archive with lots of extremely interesting content, as well as our inquiry forums. So if anybody would like to have a one-to-one -one advice session with one of our specialists, please do fill out the form. We'd love to hear from you. Um, make sure to connect with us on Facebook, X also known as Twitter, Instagram and LinkedIn. And once again, thank you again for joining us and we hope that we see you again very soon. <laughs>